record button. Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speakers this evening are Andrew Sherrill and Gavin O'Halloran. Over the past decade, Andrew worked with top design agencies in Vancouver before opening his own design firm called uh, Early Creative. His goal is to help passionate business owners take control of their brand. Gavin has been working in the marketing trade for nearly a decade. He works with local businesses to help boost their online visibility. Gavin's belief is that your marketing should do its job, which is to bring in more customers. Andrew and Gavin, take it away. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you for, for having us here today and opportunity. Uh, hello again to all the VBNers out there and hello to everyone else tuning in around the world. And um, we're really excited for today, isn't that right? Yeah, we sure are. We've got some great content here to share with you guys. So, um, so what's it all about? Uh, how, to, how to improve your brand and found it online. So branding, AKA the face of your company, how you are perceived by your, your prospects, your partners and your peers, and then how to get your brand found online, which is the, the digital marketing or the promotion side of the business. Two very important topics, very pertinent to the time we're living in right now. Well, myself and Andrew, we're, we're small business owners like yourselves. We've gone through the same struggles. How do, how do you stand out from the crowd? How do you find your edge? How do you attract more customers? So we're going to share with you some things that we've learned along the way that have helped us and hopefully that can, that can help you too. So we're going to break it into two sections. Andrew's going to speak first on the branding side and then I'm going to jump in halfway and talk about how to get the brand found online. So some key takeaways for today. At the end of the presentation, we want you to be able to know how to create a brand that excites your customers, how to create a brand that, how to improve your brand to extend its lifetime. And then we want you to have some actionable strategies, how you can successfully grow your brand's visibility online. Okay, let's, let's get straight into it. So over to you, Andrew. Thank you, Gavin. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Andrew Schroll. As you heard before, I am a brand consultant with Early Creative, where we specialize in creating brands and branded experiences and help businesses, usually small businesses, that are looking to discover the full potential of their business, of their brand. Um, as business owners, we all face some various challenges when it comes to starting a business, whether it's growing our business in different areas. And some of these challenges are just not seeing the result that you're of your efforts in your business and when you try to put it toward your career. You may not be attracting the right customers or you may be even lacking momentum and excitement amongst your customers and yourself even when it comes to showing up for your business every day. Um, and the other thing is to um, your current brand might appear outdated. Maybe it's been a while since you considered revamping your brand and you just need to take a look at it again and make sure that it feels like it's relevant and it's working for you and your target market that you're trying to reach. So before we get into talking about what, how to improve your brand, I really wanted to define what a brand is because there are lots of different perceptions around what a brand is. Um, is it a logo? Is it a brand identity? Is it a, a product or a service? It's actually none of those things. To define what a brand is, a brand is defined by what your customers say it is, believe it or not. Um, the perception that our customers say about our brand is what it is. So if we think about um, large companies like, like what you see on the page here, such as Nike, Coca-Cola, or Apple, we don't just see uh, the logo with a check mark or a scripted font or an Apple with a bite out of it. We see the actual experience that is created around these brands. These companies have invested millions of dollars to ensure that our businesses, their businesses, um, are in our, in our minds all the time and we recognize them at various elements of where they are located. So as business owners, it is our job to define what our customers are saying about our business. Thank you. 
Andrew, you've gone quiet. Andrew, you've gone quiet. Uh, Gavin and Andrew, we can't hear you. I think they lost their signal. They did. Yes, they did. Well, this is a little embarrassing. No, it is. It's just growing pains. Now, oh, let's see where they went. It's a new agenda. Tell a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this technology. Yeah, they aren't. They are no longer with us. I'm certain they'll be back any second. You want a quick joke, Roger? Can somebody text them or phone them? A quick, uh, who offered to do the quick joke? Carl De Jong. All right, Carl, go for it. This lady was out in the, on the front streets scraping off a, a bumper mm -hmm. sticker that says how great her two children were in school. You know, they're grade A students and somebody walks by and said, Homeschooling isn't what you thought it would be, eh? <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> okay, amuse yourselves. I'm going to try and call Gavin. The other one I liked was uh, Dennis the Menace sitting at the table, and his two parents are standing over me. He says, I'm getting tired of eating groceries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey everyone. everyone! Thanks for enjoying my jokes. <laughs> uh, issues. Um, hopefully, you heard most of what I was talking about. <laughs> no, we didn't hear anything. Is that Andrew? Yes. Yeah, we're back. Okay, where did you go? Uh, we decided to take a little break. <laughs> <laughs> Our internet decided to block out for a sec there, so we're back on. We're All right. Here. So do you know where you pretty much left off or where you vanished? You know where I left off. I hope you heard. I'm not really sure where you guys heard me leave off, but. Can you okay, well, you, uh, you, you, you just start. The, defini the definition is where they left off. Perfect. That's great. That's a great place to left off. Can you make me host again, please, Roger? Uh, sure. Screen is not what you want. Participants. Gavin, Moore, Mick, co-host. Okay, you're now co-host again, so you can share screen. That was exciting. Yeah, something new every time, I bet. Well, thank you guys for your patience and your understanding. Um, so we had just finished talking about the definition of what a brand is. Um, so really just focusing on our customers being the, the people that are, have a say in what our brand is. So without further ado, I wanted to talk to you about three ways in which we can improve our brand in our society today. The first way to, get, to improve our brand is to gain clarity. So this should be the first step in any um, improvement efforts that we make when it comes to our brand. Um, there are several ways in which we um, there are, there are a few ways in which we should gain clarity and there and in a marketing world we call this the three c's so if you're getting clarity about your customers your competitors and your company so about your customers so gaining clarity about your customers in this stage we want to ensure that we know our customers because we know now in the definition of a brand that our customers are the ones that are define what our brand is so it's so important that we understand who our customers are and a lot of people tend to think when they're new to business that, oh, my customers are everyone. But the truth is, um, not everyone is gonna buy your product or service. So it's not really much a point of putting all that effort into, the, into everyone as your customer. So we wanna ensure that we're very specific about who our customers are. 
um, do the research about their age demographic, what interests they have, what are their values, what other brands are attracting them. These are all ways in which you can gain clarity about our customers. The second way, the second C that we can is our competitors. So we want to make sure that we understand who our competitors are and who we're in the market with. This might sound odd to really know and understand our competitors, but I can guarantee you that if we learn about our competitors, if we know what they're doing well and what they're not doing well, we can really position our business and to differentiate from them or even collaborate with them and really once we have a better understanding of who we're in the market with. And finally, the third C that I wanna to talk to you about is gaining clarity about our company. A lot of businesses, some of you mentioned that you started a brand without, um, we started a business without establishing a brand first, which is great. Um, it's great that you were able to kick the, just kick, kick at it and get the, hit the ground running. Um, but when it comes to business, we wanna make sure that we understand um, uh, our values, our goals that we have for the future, what our company mission is, um, who our customers are and who, who, who is being attracted to our company. These are all things that we need to understand in order to make the best decision for our brand moving forward. So with all this information in mind, our, our customers, our competitors, and our company, this will create a pivot point in making, uh, in making our brand the right moves, <laughs> sorry, the right moves for our brand. Um, and th that leads us to the next thing. So choosing your next move. So when choosing your next move for your business, we want to make sure that we're choosing the right direction. Now, there's so many different directions that we could take our business, whether it's just a slight change or a massive change. And today, for the purpose of this presentation, I want to talk about two ways in which you can improve our brand in the right direction. Um, so the first way is called a brand refresh. And to define what the brand refresh is, it is essentially updating the visual appearance of our brand's identity, um, whether that's changing um, the look of your logo, your brand identity. So essentially, if you think about, if you're in a house and you have this beautiful decor, but there's this one wall that just feels like it's off-putting, the easiest way to update that, refresh that wall or that space is just to put a fresh coat of paint on it and just change the color. So that's essentially what a brand refresh is, almost like a makeover, um, just changing different elements of your brand or in order to um, update the visual appearance. So some reasons that we'd wanna approach our, our business with a brand refresh or improve our business with a brand refresh um, is to update components within our brand identity. So for example, your logo design, that could be something that might not be um, representing your business well or your values, and it might just need to be updated to attract a different target market. Your colors and typography are what um, we use to communicate the voice and the tone of our business and our brand. So we wanna make sure that we're using colors that are really specific to the message that we're trying to create. And brand collateral, so that relates to websites, um, stationery, anything that's related to what your customers are in contact with with your business. We wanna ensure that all that is cohesive and consistent across the board. So if we look at an example here, this is the website we designed for a massage studio called Healing Tree Massage. And their challenge was that they weren't really, their brand and their colors and their typography wasn't really speaking the message of their business. So what we did was we created a brand identity, uh, just updated the brand to reflect their customers and their desired reach and to be able to better, better communicate their business um, to their customers by just by switching up the colors um, and creating some graphic elements and updating the font so that it just felt more um, unique to them. The second direction of improving your brand is to do a rebrand. So if, if a brand refresh is essentially repainting a wall, a rebrand would be tearing down that wall and building up something new in its place. So in other words, it's reimagining the entire look of your brand from the ground up. So it would be looking at different strategies, changing your business strategies. If you're in a, if you're in a business and you're attracting a market and that market isn't the one that isn't really doing you justice, then definitely um, we want to do a rebrand in order to attract that market that we're trying to reach. Perhaps you've changed your business name. 
So if you change your business name, you might think, okay, well, this isn't working for me in this current direction. So I'm going to switch to a rebrand in order to ensure that my business is accurately represented. Or even if you may, you might have just acquired a new business or if you've undergone some new management, you might be realizing, okay, well, our values aren't really resonating with our current brand and we're not really speaking clearly to our customers. So we want to ensure that our brand really represents our business. So a great example is of a, of a client that we've worked with called Liquid Amber Tattoo. They're, lo they're located in Vancouver um, here. And this is a, their existing logo from a few years back. And they were targeting, um, their, their brand just felt like very similar to other tattoo shops in the, in the Vancouver area. And it wasn't really differentiating and they weren't really reaching the target market that they were after. They were actually after a target market that was a high-end female demographic that would come back for returning uh, tattoos. So we created this logo as an update just to really freshen up the space to create a more inviting, um, welcoming look that was consistent across every touch point that we created, whether that's their print and digital to their signage and their environmental design. So this, as you can see, was a complete transformation. Essentially, what did we refer to as a rebrand. Finally, the third thing, the third way in order to improve your brand is to maintain consistency. Now, if we don't get anything out of this presentation today, I highly suggest that you just take a look at your brand and see if it's consistent. A lot of you said that you're happy with your current brand, but is it consistent across every area of your business? If you want to ensure that in order to maintain consistency, whether that's through your um, your business cards, your website, every area that your customers come in contact with your brand, you want to make sure that's consistent. So again, if we look at Liquid Amber Tattoo, we created um, similar colors, graphics, shapes, and imagery in order to maintain consistency across every platform that that customer would have a, and come in contact with their brand. And consistency really allows that member, that, um, that customer to know who these who they are. So what are some of the values of being consistent? It really creates familiarity amongst your customers. It keeps your brand memorable. It builds trust amongst your amongst your customers. It becomes easy to recognize because people, when they see your brand once, they'll see it again another way, a place, and they'll begin to recognize it more easily as time goes on. If you think of companies like Nike, Apple, you begin to recognize and, and know their brand just by picking up a piece of paper that has their brand on it. Um, and it really establishes authority within your, your um, industry amongst your competitors, differentiating your business. So let's sum it up. So we talked about the challenges that many business owners face and we're not alone. There's so many businesses that go through this every day, every year, um, how to improve your business. So I just really want to encourage everyone here that if you have it, if you have a business and you're facing the challenge, there's always options to change it. There's, we talked about um, gaining clarity, the three improvements, the three ways to improve your brand, and that's gaining clarity um, in your business, whether that's through the through C's, the competitors, your customers, and your company. We talked about um, choosing a direction that would allow you to move in the right move, and take the right decisions in order to improve your brand. And finally, the most important, I would say, is to maintain consistency, both offline and online. And that's where I'm going to hand it over to Gavin to give you more information about how to build your brand online. And he will take it from here. <clears throat> Thank you so much for the opportunity, you guys. I'll be back after Gavin, and we can answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, if you have any questions now, this would be a good opportunity to unmute yourselves and ask them of Andrew before we transition to Gavin. Yeah, that's a great idea, Roger. Thank you. Any questions from anyone? I'll have a question if I may, uh, Roger. Yeah, far away, Carl. How do you re determine, I'll say financially, or when, when do you have to rebrand and, and start over again? Uh, look at Coca-Cola. I mean, they've had their image for so, a lot longer than I've been around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, absolutely. What, it really depends on the customer base that you're trying to attract. Um, and it and doesn't necessarily mean that you have to rebrand. Um, that's kind of why I talk about a brand refresh as well, because a brand refresh will allow you to 
pull out specific areas of your business. So Coca-Cola is a great example. They, they have had the same logo over time, but over time they have adapted and evolved their brand and their logo just to changing um, the, the way it looks um, in different areas, in different campaigns. Um, so there's lots of opportunity to um, improve. Um, and just as time goes on, technology changes. So it's important to always keep it updated and fresh. Okay. Any other questions for Andrew? Hearing none. Gavin, right. wow us. Covered, yeah. All right, here for Gavin. Thank you, Andrew. And so Andrew has shared some, some great tips, some great advice there for, for those who are unsure or lacking direction in your brand. And that's, that's step one. So the second piece of the puzzle is setting ourselves up so that we can get found by our customers and getting our brand into the, into the hands of our customers. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna look at now. So what now, you, you've worked with Andrew, you've identified your brand and your brand strategy, and uh, now it's about getting your brand to show where it matters. So this is what I'm referring to here. We're referring to something like this, the Google search environment. Um, this is the first place where your potential customers are gonna search for your services. So we need to be working on activities that are gonna help promote our brand and get exposure here. Or could it even be here? How do, we, how do we work on activities to get our brand to show up here in the Google Maps? Or could it even be here on a third party site? How do we get more exposure and to get our company to the top of the listings? So let, let's take a look at the, the search landscape here for a moment and I'll just try and break it down for you. So we're all familiar with this. If you search for anything on your phone or on your laptop, this is what you'll see. Um, at the very top, you have the Google Ads, which is also called pay-per-click. Um, this is a paid position. Uh, you're paying for the right to be there, and the, the costs vary depending on what industry you're in. Then in the middle, you have the, the Google Maps or the local pack, it's sometimes called. And this is linked to your Google My Business page. Better optimized your Google My Business page, the better exposure you're going to have here. And then below that, you have the organic search results, which are paid, which are earned positions over a period of time. So you have a choice here. If you wanna get exposure in front of your customers, you can pay for the position to be there, or you can earn the right to be there by implementing tactics over the course of a period of time. So we're gonna look at how do we can grow our organic reach today. So first, we've got to take care of some fundamentals. The first thing we do is, first thing we do is we want to make sure that we're building a strong foundation. And at the heart of everything we do online, it starts with our website. Why? Google, Google's going to read and analyze every single element of your website to determine how valuable you are as a business, as a brand, as an influencer to people the people who are searching for your services and what's expected of you. There is a minimum barrier to entry. You got to be, your website's got to be structured correctly. It's got to have the sufficient amount of content and it's got to be, it's got to be technically sound the way they want it to. And then, and then they're going to benchmark you against others in the field to determine how valuable you are and where to place you. So then we're going to just make sure we're, we're, paying particular attention to the technical essentials. So we're ticking all the technical boxes, which I'm gonna look, which we're gonna look at now. So these are the five technical website essentials. Your non-negotiables, which you need to take care of. Is my website fast? Is it secure? Does it have the, the padlock on the top left-hand corner? Does it work on all devices? Does it have the basic SEO structures in place? And is it, is it easy to navigate? Does it make sense for the user? Items like uh, time on site, and bounce rates, and how many pages per session. These are all important metrics which Google uh, is analyzing to determine how, how the strength of your website overall. 
So next most important part of the fundamentals is content and content strategy. This is a massive topic in itself. We're only gonna scratch the surface here today. If you wanna get deep into content strategy, there's a great guy called uh, Tyler Bazu, I believe. Roger, I believe he's been on here before in the VBN. He, he teaches you how to create content in a really efficient manner. So you would definitely check him out. And so with content strategy, you worked with Andrew and you've um, identified your brand and your brand strategy. You have your, your imaging, your messaging, your logos, your tone of voice, etc. Now it's about communicating your brand to your customers and you do that through content and a content strategy. So that, that, we'll go into a little bit deeper now to explain that. So are you talking about blogging again? Blog all day, every day until you drop. Um, yes, there seems to be a negative association with blogging, the term blogging. I don't know exactly where it comes from, but let me explain what I feel the difference is here. So if you're writing articles or blogs or content as part of a strategy, you're doing it in a logical, a purposeful, and a structured way that's actually answering the questions which your customers are posing. So you're really writing content for your customer and write it on for yourself. So that, that will be the difference how I define it. So why is it important to have a content strategy? It's important to have a content strategy because Google's looking to see that you're providing fresh content being churned out on a consistent basis. Your customers are looking for you to be engaging them and to be providing useful bits of information. Um, and then thirdly, having a content strategy, content strategy in place is gonna help guide everything that you do in the online world. So you can, and this is gonna help keep you on track. It doesn't have to be hard. You just dedicate the time. You can block off three hours every second Friday and that be your, your, your content creation day. And the only way I really know how to do content, content strategy is to keep it really simple. I don't have time to be writing, writing all day and creating content and creating graphics. So let's try and make it as efficient as possible. This is the way, this is the way I, I look at it. You want to choose your medium. So do you like to write? Do you like to be on video? Do you like, are you more audio? So podcasts will be your, your, your medium. Or are you more on the graphical side? Then when you choose your platforms, you have um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook groups, Instagram, Medium, or some spe specific industry sites where your um, industry blogs or websites where there's a lot of uh, engagement. Next, you wanna choose one core topic per month. From here, you're gonna create a long form article, resource or video. And from this, from this long uh, form article, you're gonna chop it down into smaller pieces and these are gonna be supporting articles for your, for your overall core topic. And then what you can do is you can pull quotes out of it, you can create graphics out of it. And this is gonna form part of your overall content strategy. And then what you can do is you can use a free tool like Hootsuite to schedule the content. And, and have it all sorted over the course of two, three, four weeks. If you wanted to take it an, to, to the next level, you could then look at creating what I call expert status content. What's this? Expert status content is, is creating types of content that is targeted at a specific problem and it's going to educate your, educate your customers and it's going to elevate your status above others. So, some examples here, these can be ebooks, like a how-to guide, infographics, webinars, white papers. So these are just some examples of how to create expert status content. The next part of the fundamentals is our reputation. So in the, in the offline world, our reputation is noted in all the referrals we get, the, the partnerships, the business relationships we have, but but in the online world, Google can't see this. So Google has to figure out a system to determine how reputable you are as a company. So it uses things like trust 
authority signals. And these are signals to Google to say, okay, these guys are a real deal. And they, they are trustworthy and they deserve to have better position than others. So let's take a look at what exactly this means. So then at the tier one level, we have setting up all the basic, the basic profiles. So it sounds obvious, but you need to make sure that you're, you have the LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and you have all these accounts set up. Your information is correct. Your graphics and your visuals are all consistent across all the profiles. Next, we're gonna look at trusted business profiles. So these can be chambers of commerce, or boards of trade, the Better Business Bureau, Trust Pilot. Then you want to look at industry specific sites. These could be trade associations, additional review sites, and listing sites. Some examples here for you. So, for people in the trades business or the home service business, we have Home Stars, we have Trusted Pros. For lawyers, we have the Law List and the Canadian Law List. And for startups, we have Crunchbase. And for counselors and therapists, we have BC counselors. So find, find the ones within your industry. Make sure you're getting your, your, your listings set up and that it, your profiles are filled out entirely. When you do this, you want to make sure that everything is consistent across all your profiles. So particularly your name, the business name, the address, the phone number. If you've moved the address, updated your information, you want to make sure that you're finding all the profiles that you have around the web and make sure that your information is, is consistent. Next part of the, you're managing your reputation is all about reviews, 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 reviews. So, so important. Now, it seems as though a lot of people find it difficult to ask for reviews. They ought to feel weird about doing it or they don't know how to go about asking for a review, but it's such an important part of your reputation now that everyone really should have a strategy in place for growing the reviews they have. Let's take, take this example here. I'm searching for a dance studio and the results show 82, 82 reviews, four reviews, seven reviews. Which one am I gonna pick? I think the answer is obvious here. And the reason with Google reviews and particularly the review rating, there's no hiding anymore. When you search for a company name or search for a service, the review rating is right there in front of you. So you need to make sure that we're working on growing the number of reviews we have because it's, it's so exposed. Next thing we want to look at doing is adding more review and reputation material to your website. These can be case studies, customer success stories, video testimonials. This is gonna round out your entire uh, reputation profile. And when you get a good review, don't be shy. Be proud of it. Get it out there and put it on social media and let, 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 the, world, let the world see it. This is a, a client that I started working with a couple of months ago. Uh, they do racetrack driving experiences here. So I asked them, um, I said, John, uh, how many years have you been in business? I've been in business three years. Roughly how many customers do you get per year? Between 60 and 100 customers. And do you ever ask them for reviews? He's like, not really, but we have a few reviews on TripAdvisor. I said, the first place where your customers are going to search for your services and come across your brand is in Google. And you, right now you only have one review. So let's work on a strategy for growing that. It's gonna be really important for that first impression. So how, how else can we improve our online reputation? So let's think for a second, let's consider links and mentions and shares. So this is, how many websites and blogs are talking about our brand? How many times have we been mentioned? How many times have we been given a shout out or shared on social media? Have we been in the news lately? Have we been interviewed? Have we been on a podcast? Has our product been reviewed? Have we been have we spoken at an event? All these references and mentions, these are all like upvotes. Upvotes to say, 
this company is the real deal. These guys are reputable. And this is what this is what Google's looking at to determine uh, your reputation. So, so see about building on some of these reputation signals moving forward. So think within your own industry, what are some of the, some of the common authority signals, and how can you take advantage of them? Okay, so we've taken care of the fundamentals, which are having a rock solid website, having a content strategy in place, and taking care of our reputation and having a strategy to grow the number of reviews. Now let's look at some specific tactics for how you can promote your brand online. If you are a local business, this is the number one most important thing for you. You need to make sure you have your Google My Business page profile set up, and fill out completely. There's loads of different features within it that are very useful to local businesses. This is what it looks like on the outside. So if you search for a company name, you have the information here on the right-hand side. If you click inside it, there's more information. You have the photographs, you have the review rating and the reviews. We're all familiar with this. And once you jump inside the dashboard, I would encourage you to make sure that you've got all the all the different areas filled out. It's like your information, the photographs, the products, the services. We want to make sure that your profile is filled out entirely. And the reason we want to do this is because this is where you'll see the benefit. The more optimized your profile, the better chance you have at showing up in the Google Maps environment. Another good uh, strategy for you to grow your brand is to do partnerships. They're great, great for exposure. So identify who compliments you, who, what, what business has the same target market as you. What you could do is you run an event together, run a, do a webinar together, and you could do a research paper, write an ebook together. So you're gonna benefit here from the joint promotion of, of the exercise. So think who you can join forces with and where, what, what like what uh, specific activities you can do here to, to gain traction. This is another, another activity that we do for our clients is to identify guest post opportunities. So a guest post is, it's writing an article that's gonna be featured on someone else's blog or website, and it's gonna be featured in front of their audience. All right, so you wanna look to try and locate blogs within your industry. And the way to do this is pretty simple. You should Google it. If you Google blog plus industry, write for us plus industry, you're gonna find a bunch of different websites that are looking for contributors. So here on the right-hand side, we have write for us plus photography. And these are, these are blogs who are screaming out for people to contribute, contribute to their profile. And you'd be surprised at how many websites are looking for contributors. So if you do like to write and you're good at that side of it, can do some research to find some areas for you. Here's an example, Right For Us plus fitness, loads of fitness blogs. Right for, even local ones, Right For Us plus fitness plus Vancouver. These, these are local websites looking for content contributors. Great for exposure. Next tactic, what you can do online, what you can do is to engage online communities. Great for exposure and great for growing your brand. Facebook groups is now the largest online community in the world. There's going to be groups within your industry. There's going to be groups that your customers are going to be in. There's going to be groups about creating groups. So get it, get it, find, a, find the groups where your customers are in and get inside and start providing advice and giving value. LinkedIn, I think from the, the poll results, a lot of us are using LinkedIn. Um, are we using it effectively enough? I'd say some are and some aren't. The idea here, your strategy here is to build connections, to engage with your prospects and to start sharing your, sharing your, your content, but also to be commenting and engaging on your prospects content as well. The next, um, the next online network that I would recommend is Alignable. I think someone mentioned it already before today. And I use this on a daily basis. It's great for building connections with local business owners. You can chat with them, you can ask questions. 
there's a Q and A form as well. So it's, that's a great network for building your online exposure. Next, you can look to Q and A forms, which examples here are Quora, Reddit, and there's a new one called Blurit. So here, here there are there are prospects who are have questions and are looking for answers. So if it, if you can if you can go in there, provide advice and show your expertise, this is gonna be great exposure for your brand. Next, you could host online meetups. And I know a lot of us are completely zoomed out a bit at the moment, but if you can find, if you can find a way to create a, a smaller meetup for targeted at a, a specific group and um, a specific target market, it could work out well. So see, by, see if you can do that. And lastly, network, network, network. There is no better time right now than to be networking. There are a ton of free online networking events available through the Boards of Trade, through the Vancouver Business Network. Um, so make sure you take advantage of, of all these opportunities. And the result of all this is that the more exposure you have, the more brand search queries you're going to get. Now, what is that? That's how many times people search for your company name in Google. And that's, that's a key indicator to Google, like these guys are important, these guys are reputable. So that's how it's gonna help you. This is just a way to, one example of a way that we find opportunities for clients. For here, example, we are doing research for a landscaping company. We type it into Google and the first result is Yelp. The second result is uh, the who's.com. So we found that it was going to be pretty hard to get this company to rank within Google in the short term. So what we said was let's look to Yelp and Yelp was less competitive. So what we'll do is let's put a bit of focus on Yelp, optimizing the profile, growing the reviews there, and we'll, we'll we have a better chance of getting up to the top of the page. This is one strategy where you can find new opportunities. And this is another tactic that we do is called digital stalking. So it's trying to find out what your competition are doing. So you just have to go here, it's a free tool. What you do is you insert your competitor's domain. It's gonna spit back all the other websites that are talking about your competitor. So we're gonna give an example here. We were doing research for a physiotherapy clinic and this was their competitor, Physio Vancouver. So let's check out the reputation and what Physio Vancouver are doing. So you can see here, I'll direct your attention to the left-hand side, circled in red. What it looks like is there's a, there's a link on the Tennis Canada website referring to Physio Vancouver. And it looks like it's a resource guide on specific tennis injuries. So there's two things you can do here. What you can do is you can look at the resource and see if you can create a better one. If you can create a better resource, then you reach out to Tennis Canada and go, we created a more in-depth guide on tennis injuries. It would be great if you could uh, share this with your audience. Or number two, what you could do is you could use this opportunity and look at other similar opportunities and say, what about Squash Canada or other racket sports? Maybe they need resources around specific racket sport injuries. So you reach out to them. So there are many, many tactics here that you can use to promote your brand online. We just touch, I just touched on a few of them there. You can do contests and giveaways, challenges, free courses, beta groups. So the idea here is to trial some, trial some, and see if they work in your industry and then move to the next one. So let's, let's try and bring it all together for you now. And well, we're trying to wrap this up and, and bring it together. So your brand is, we're all at different stages of the journey. Your brands are always evolving. Whether you've done a, done a simple refresh, brand refresh or it's a full, full rebranding, there's always, you're always allowed to make improvements along the way. The main thing here is that you are happy with your brand and, and that you're maintaining consistency and that you have a strategy in place for growing your brand. 
So that's gonna, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the branding side or how to get your brand found online, we offer, um, Andrew offers a 30 minute discovery call and I offer a free online presence assessment. So for those who are curious about this presentation or want to learn more or this sparks something, we offer some free help. So definitely encourage you to, to, to reach out and avail of this offer. Um, I know we just love helping local businesses. So, that. Yeah. Thank you, Gavin. That was great. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Gavin? Or Andrew? Or, Andrew. or me? <laughs> I have a question. Okay. This is Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Uh, about the reviews on uh, Google My Business. I don't have any, but I have several well, hundreds of testimonials. So now if I want the reviews, do I have, like I do hypnotherapy, so do I have to go back to each client and ask them for a review and then have them post it? Is that how it works? Yeah, there's no way for you to do that yourself, unfortunately. You'll have to get them to do it. But there is an easy way to do it. From within, your, from within the dashboard, there is a quick link. So you can copy and paste a direct link and you can email uh, your client with a link um, and maybe you can copy the testimonial that you had before. So for them, it would just be about clicking the link, copy and paste the text into it and it's, it can be done pretty fast. So that might be a good thing to look at. Okay. I, I haven't quite followed that, but I will check with you <laughs> on how to do it. So, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Gavin. Gavin, a related question. Uh, do um, LinkedIn recommendations carry much weight? Um, in terms of the user, the user, to user, someone reading your profile, yes. Um, specifically down to Google analyzing that, I don't, I haven't heard any reports of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they are uh, accumulating all the different reviews from around the web. Their the algorithm is intensely amazing so i wouldn't be surprised if they're factoring that in to be honest thank you are there any further yeah, i have a question Mohammed, yeah i have a go. question uh, uh gavin uh, can you give me quick tips for uh, fitness industry because uh, one of my uh, client they are doing currently local offline but they wanted to go online so can you give me quick tips for that um, fitness is a very visual market and um, you definitely want to have a YouTube channel if you were here last week you would have got some great tips on how to start your YouTube channel and monetizing your channel yeah you want to be on Instagram for sure uh, it depends on the target market of course if it's uh, individuals if you're going after group sessions or or more corporate level I might get to give you some more ideas there if I knew it's more into uh, like black belt uh, karate karate classes and more one into one to one classes okay um maybe you could look at some partnerships as well if if the fitness person personal trainer knows uh, uh yoga yoga center doesn't know any other personal trainers or gyms or even physios and people in that sort of category Building out the referral and a partnership type of network, that might be a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Can I Are ask there... a question? Off you go. Yay. <laughs> um, I just wondered, because I don't have LinkedIn, and I'm just wondering how important is that? And everyone, I can hear everyone sighing like, oh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would consider it an essential social profile to set up uh, at the beginning. So you have your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I consider one that you definitely need. It then comes down to your target market and your target audience. So if they're going to be on that, can you show your brand on that and communicate and tell your story, sh share your wisdom? Then it becomes more important. So it really be about is your, is your target audience on there. 
But I also say, add to that, um, Gavin was talking about partnerships as well. And I found, in my experience using LinkedIn, I found it's a great place to collaborate with other business owners who may be in your industry. So, mm -hmm. and even if they are competitors, it's just great to have an awareness of who is in your market and what kind of what kind of content they're putting out there to see how they're using LinkedIn so that you can compare and you can um, make necessary ad adaptations to your business to see um, okay, well, this is what my competitors are doing. Like, is my business doing that, or what can I learn from that, and how you can improve and grow in that area? If that makes sense. So, even if you don't use it actively, it's just good to observe and to make sure that you have an account and um, just put yourself in that position as well, because your competitor, your competitors are there. So, you want is to make that sure. a, a business one or is that a personal one? Um, I, have like I, a I have both. I have set up a personal and a business one just because you can see my profile and it links to my company. So it's good to have both. Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're so welcome. Any final question? Hearing none. Uh, Gavin and Andrew, on behalf of uh, Vancouver Business Network, I'd like to thank you. Uh, for sharing this uh, great information. Uh, there's uh, nearly 40 of us online and I'm pretty sure everyone got some great value from awesome. your words of wisdom. So I'm going to uh, conclude this uh, video, uh, but don't go away. <laughs>